welcome to the 15th instalment of this journey across the Premier League series in which we drop a fascinating history behind all the grounds in the Premier League. Today we're off to the land of lotuses and six fingers to talk about the fascinating history about Norwich City and their ground of Carrow Road. We're going back in time to the early 20th century when Norwich were playing their games at a disused quarry which was called the Nest. Get it? Canaries? They're a bird and they live in a... I am flabbergasted. The club would happily play their games at the ground until the 1930s when the crowd started to grow and the nest couldn't handle them. Given the ground was literally in a pit, area to expand was next to impossible, so Norwich's days in the nest were numbered and would start looking for a new ground. The final nail in the coffin would come in 1935 when one corner of the pitch subsided up to 10 metres after an old chalk working had collapsed. The result of this was that the FA would declare the ground no longer suitable for large crowds. With the nest unusable and the new season just weeks away, the club would hastily have to find a new place to play their football and would find a new site at the Bolton Pool Sports Ground in Carrow Road, which was owned by JJ Coleman. Yes, that's right, the Mustard Man. Ever wondered why it's called Carrow Road? Well, the road takes its name from Carrow Abbey, which is a Benedictine monastery located over the river from the existing football stadium. Founded in the 12th century, and the building and grounds are still there today, albeit a bit more modern. Once a new ground was sourced, the task was to get the ground ready to play football matches, with initial materials for the ground being sourced from the chicken run section of the Nest Stadium to help build a new stand. And by August 1935, just 82 days after Norwich had first secured the ground, it was ready for hosting football matches, with an initial capacity of 35,000, with the first match being against West Ham, with Norwich winning 4-3. With the opening of the stadium, it was described as the largest construction job in the city since the building of Norwich Castle, and with that included a covered terrace which was paid by club captain Evelyn Barclay to which a stand is named after him up to the present day. Along came 1938 and Norwich would cement itself as the first time a ruling monarch would come to watch a second division football match with King George VI watching Norwich against Millwall. If you want some, I'll give it to you. You want to do it with me? Moving into 1956 and the club would install floodlights which cost a whopping £9,000 or a week's worth of Timo Werner's services in today's money. <laughs> couple of penalties and Werner's in there and is wondering how he didn't put that one away. The result of this meant that Norwich almost went bankrupt with only a good FA Cup run helping to turn around their financial misfortunes. 1963 would be a historic year for Carrow Road with the ground experience its record attendance of nearly 44,000 for a sixth round FA Cup match against Leicester City. Boy, the FA Cup certainly isn't like it used to be. In the wake of the Ibrox disaster in 1971, stringent rules would come in regarding safety requirements for football stadiums. The result of this meant that the ground's capacity would plummet to just 20,000. The capacity of the ground would rise in subsequent years, coupled with the building of the River End in 1979, which is still there today as Carrow Road's oldest stand. Moving into the 1980s, and tragedy would strike in the form of a fire in 1984 which would take out its main stand, which would be rebuilt in 1987 and is still there today as the city stand. When the stand opened, chairman at the time, Robert Chase, described visiting the new stand as going to the theatre, the only difference being that our stage is covered with grass. Clearly sounds like Chase hasn't been there this season then. Seven for Chelsea! Norwich all over the place. Along came the Taylor Report in the 1990s and with that a redevelopment of the stadium with the old Barclays stand which was built in 1937, teared down and rebuilt, a new south stand would come along a decade after, opened in 2004, taking the capacity of the ground to 27,000. Moving into the present day and it appears that Norwich have recently parted company with Mr Topic Man himself, Daniel Farker, so maybe the club can turn a corner in the Premier League, if not. Well, at least you have some nice Delia Smith pies to cry into, which to be honest, is probably better than what Newcastle will have to cry into. And a deal! The money can't save you anymore that can save me. Get back! 
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you fancy sharing the video too, that would massively help the channel out. What are your experiences of Carrow Road? Feel free to leave a comment below. I'd love to hear them. Love it. Next up, it's that club that was renowned for providing players to top class teams. Certainly Robin Van Persie, who turned his back on Arsenal, a club he loved very much. We shouldn't forget that. Samir Nasri, a goal scorer today. Certainly took his chance tonight to make sure that Liverpool won the game. That's right, it's Southampton and their ground of St Mary's. This has been Civil Conversation and I will see you in the next video.